Hi guys, welcome back to Slice of Game. My name's Thomas, and today we got a special little treat for you. We've got an unboxing here of Nintendo Switch, Nintendo Switch Pro Controller, and Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wilds Special Edition. Let's get to it. All right, if we're going to do a Switch unboxing, then we might as well go ahead and get the King Contender out of the way. Here we are with the Switch in its boxing, its original packaging itself. Very nice packaging, very nice detail. A lot of the pictures that we saw for all the original press conferences and reviews. Hmm... Let's see, nothing on the outside, outside of Nintendo Switch. Got all your standard information that nobody's ever going to read. Okay, so we're going to flip it over, undo this little slatch on the back, and there's the magic. Now, on this first layer, we've got a little Joy-Con controllers. Okay, let's see, can we get that out? There we are. Go ahead and slide that over to the side for now. And we've got... The man of the hour itself, the Switch tablet. There we are, ladies and gents. You're seeing it for the first time, possibly, if you haven't seen an unboxing. If you'd already have one, I don't know why you're watching this to begin with, but hi, welcome. <laughs> so it's got a nice little, is it seven inch screen? Seven inch screen. It's got a nice little kickstand on the back of it. Let's see if we can, oh, there we go. Nice little kickstand. That's also where your micro SD card goes in the back. Okay, your game card slot on the top, little ventilation fans, volume rocker up and down, power button, and obviously the docks for the Joy-Cons on either side. So, set that down, move on to the Joy-Cons themselves. Okay, take them out of the packaging, and right away we've got the right side Joy-Con, it's little buttons on the top, these little rockers here, there's made so that you can use them like a L1 and R1 on your typical controller, nice little analog stick. Uh, one thing to note about these, and I'll talk a little bit more when we get to the Pro Controller, is because this is meant to be also a mobile console, these Joy-Cons, the, um, the analog sticks don't have nearly as much movement. Not a wide range of movement as much as you're probably used to on a normal controller. Go ahead and set that one down. Go ahead and take the next one out. And as you can see, it looks fairly similar to the right Joy-Con. The difference being that obviously the buttons are moved around a little bit, and the idea behind this is one, the ergonomics of it. So if you're holding this, you know, you, this if this is gonna be your main one, and a lot of your Xbox fans will agree with this possibly, uh, no comment, that the, uh, the left thumbstick probably feels best when you're using motion control, okay? You've got your little plus and minus sign, little home button, et cetera, et cetera, so forth. Obviously, they, they, honestly, they feel pretty good considering what you're getting. Okay, let's set those aside for the time being. See what else we've got down here in the box. Okay. Let's see. Okay, then there's your power brick. Oop, there we go. Big bulky power brick too. But the good news is, is that because you're, it's going to be down here at the end, you don't have to worry about it being in the way like, you know, a laptop charger or something. So that's nice. Hmm. We've got a little Nintendo logo on it. Okay, set that aside. Got ourselves HDMI cable. I'm not going to worry about taking that out of the box. Doesn't need to. Got your little Nintendo Switch health and safety guide. Okay. And then here we have something to go along with the Joy-Cons. Something a little more interesting. It looks very odd without being used for anything. And what you do is, with these, is you actually slide the Joy-Cons down while the microphone falls into shot. <laughs> you actually slide the Joy-Cons down into this to act as a dock. That way you can use this like a regular controller at home, and it, it actually feels very nice considering what it is. It doesn't really feel like a normal controller that you're used to because obviously you have the squareness of the Joy-Cons. And uh, one thing, oh, that I forgot to mention is that the right side Joy-Con has a little IR blaster because these are, uh, on one hand, motion sensitive and they're able to do fun little things like with one, two, switch. But uh, yeah, we'll set that aside for the time being again. Okay, we've got ourselves a little... I haven't actually seen these in person yet. These are interesting. They're these little controller doodads that slide down on the end of your switch for the HD rumble features and all the fun stuff that you get to do with it. But uh, it's made so that you can use these like with the Wii controllers. They, um, it's a wrist strap, basically. But it makes it a little bit more ergonomic to hold in your hand as well. So that's... It's a nice little feature. We'll set that to the side for the time being. See what else we've got. Okay. All right, what is this? Oh, there we go. 
And there you have it with the dock itself. There we go, Nintendo Switch. We can see if we can get that in focus. Okay, we're good. Okay. All right, it's got the nice Nintendo logo on the back. And the idea, obviously, is when you have it in docked mode, the Nintendo Switch sits nice and firmly down in the dock. Okay. Good, nice, everything looks good. Open back of it, and this is interesting. I like the way that they did this. Instead of having the cables just strewn around like you do on uh, a lot of your mainstream consoles, they've actually got them where they hide away and connect into this here. And it makes me kind of wonder, honestly, if they're expecting this to be easily replaceable or anything, because it does seem to be like this is easy to get to. It seems like it, it's not like a normal conventional power supply, if that's where the actual power supply itself is. It, um... Looks like it's easily replaceable, which is kind of interesting. We'll see if Nintendo comments about that later on. So, okay, there we are with it in its docked mode. And if you want to go and remove it in its non-docked mode, you take the Joy-Cons, if I can get it off of this. Camera assistant, please help me. That is Nick helping me, by the way. But you simply slide it down on the side of it. And it's hope that it works. Okay, you put the wrong one on. I wouldn't put one in the back. There's another one. Oh, there is another one. Okay, excuse me. <laughs> so we've got two of those, and apparently they do have a left and right one but they don't specify left and right on them. Oh, okay, I see what it is. You're supposed to match these up with your Joy-Con based on the little plus or minus symbol that you've got on the controller itself. That way you can make sure that you've got these put on correctly. It's interesting. Okay, but to get it in the undock mode, you literally just pick it up, but the idea is that you slide your Joy-Cons on, and there's your mobile gaming right out of the box. You have the ability to hook this up to a TV, enjoy your nice console living room entertainment like most all your mo other mainstream, mainstream consoles, or you can take it on the go, play with your friends, get up to four and a half hours of battery life on most of your mainstream games, I believe, somewhere in that ballpark. Um, connected up to, I believe it's eight other devices at the same time for a, for a LAN party, which is actually pretty interesting. Um, they tried doing this with, uh, with the Nintendo 3DS and the Nintendo DS, but... And uh, never caught on quite as well, but with the Nintendo Switch having the capabilities of, uh, we'll say, a modern home console, it might might make it where games are games are more accessible to you and your friends. So now that we've got that out of the way, let's go ahead and move on to one of the peripherals for it. We've got the Pro Controller. Now the Pro Controller does not come standard with it. The Pro Controller is an extra add-on, and depending on where it's at, it's going to be eighty U.S. dollars, seventy to eighty U.S. dollars. So, open it up. Weren't quite as nice with the packaging maybe on this one. So, pull it out. In fact, they were really not nice with the packaging on this one because you get two things in the box. No documentation, no, you get a cable, USB, uh, actually, yeah, USB Type-C cable. Well, that's nice. And the Pro Controller itself. Okay, now, the Pro Controller itself is Honestly, if I had to compare it to anything, I'd put it somewhere in a hybrid between an Xbox One and a, well, we'll say a, a Steam controller. It's, it's got a nice ergonomic feel to it. It's uh, very similar to maybe some of the controllers you've used in the past, but it, it feels very good in the hand. It feels very sturdy. It doesn't feel cheap like you like some, like some controllers do. And I'd, I'd be really interested to see third parties possibly making a version of this that you could use with PCs. So it uses the same button layout or close to the same button layout except for the home button and this auxiliary button over here as the Joy-Cons. But it's much more comfortable and ergonomic feeling, not saying that the Joy-Cons aren't comfortable in either configuration, but this is, this is a true controller. And it really does feel substantial. It feels like a nice controller. I, I would probably prefer using this for home use. However, um... I'm not sure if it's worth the price. Now, your mileage may vary. You might think that this is a very good value, but that's, that's to be seen. Now, one interesting feature that it does have, though, is that if you're an Amiibo fan, is the Wii U gave you the ability to connect Amiibos 
and use it for in-game content, which was really nice. I personally never used the Amiibos for that, but I thought they made cool collectibles. It was a way to get cheap figures or something for a collectible. But you basically, you set it on the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller, like similar to the way you did with the Wii U controller, and it would detect it and it would allow you to use it in-game. So that'll be interesting because that means that Nintendo is still trying to drive full force the Amiibo craze. And that means we'll probably see new Amiibos coming out soon from Nintendo for more first-party games and maybe even some third-party development. We'll, we'll, we'll have to see on that. So let's set that aside. And we've got our next big contender, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. This was one of the most heavily anticipated games of the year by far. And this is the special edition. Now, this is a big box. Now, you're probably questioning, what, what, what would they put in a big box this big? Well, that's what we're here to find out. <laughs> that, let's go ahead and open the box up on top. Go ahead and move some of this other box out of the way. It's like it's called an unboxing, but we have too many boxes in the screen. Mm. Ha, 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 ha. Okay, so... Let's go ahead and slide it out from the side. What do we have first in the top? First on the list we have... Oh, this is interesting. Can I go that way? Nope, does not go that way. Let's go ahead and slide the box out of the way for just a moment. Okay. All right. Okay. Go ahead and open that up. And, oh, that is nice. It is a Breath of the Wild themed Nintendo Switch case. That is very nice, actually. It feels there's a very good zipper on it. Like, you know, I'm sure you came to this channel to figure out, oh yeah, the quality of zippers, but just figured you'd like to know that. It's like, no, oh, that's 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 very nice because so far we haven't really seen many uh, as far as peripherals go, as far as accessories go. We haven't seen many options for cases, so that's. That's nice to see, actually. I think that, that that would be a good standalone item, honestly. I could probably purchase that separately. Okay, I'll set that to the side for now. Okay, and nothing else in that. Okay, go ahead and come back to the big box. Move the plastic out of the way. And bring out the blue egg carton style material that is holding, obviously, Zelda Breath of the Wild, the game itself. See if we can get that in shot. Are we good? Okay. Okay, good. Okay. All right. Get the back shot there. Nice little bit of artwork on that. Okay. Open it up. And there's the game cartridge. I, ke I keep seeing shots of these online for different games, and I think it's funny how much space they used for these game cartridges, considering how small they are. Now... These are not SD cards, despite what you might hear rumors online possibly saying these are not the same as a regular SD card, okay? These are their own patented technology. It uses a type of flash memory, though, similar to SD cards, which is possibly part of the reason why the Nintendo Switch is able to run so quickly compared to disk storage. Fun fact, cartridges, though smaller, were a lot faster at loading than disks when they first came, when they first came out. Um, obviously, the cartridge was there before the disc, but still. Okay, so there's the game itself. And here we have the soundtrack for Breath of the Wild, which is interesting. You don't see soundtracks for games many much these days. It's uh, very uncommon, honestly. It's uh, nice because that, that says that they're, they're very satisfied with the quality of the game, not only the gameplay, but also the aesthetics of it, the sound of it. Well, that's enjoyable to see. More games, if they've got good soundtrack, should give you that as an option. So, we'll set that down. Okay. And here, we have a nice little gold or brass coin, bronze, whatever material you might call that. And uh, it's got the nice Zelda logo. And, yeah, it's a nice little collectible item. The Nintendo's items are always collectible, as always. The, you can get that a little closer, possibly. Okay. All right. So I'm going to flip it over. And again. All right. 
So that's very nice. Very nice. And then finally, last item in the box. It's made to look like an ancient scroll. Fun fact, if you go to your local temple, you will find ancient scrolls in cellophane plastic. <laughs> okay, and roll it out. And we have the map of Hyrule itself. And that is, that is nice. Now, to, to tell you the truth, though, I don't know if I would, um... I'm not sure if I would really hang this, honestly. It's made out of a material... It doesn't feel like paper. It feels more like a vellum material. Maybe something that you would do for... For, um... Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe blueprints or something. It's a, it's, a, it's a very fibrous material. It doesn't feel like paper. So... But at the same time, I don't know if I would hang it because I feel like... Or at least I wouldn't hang it in thumbtacks. I'd probably try to get a frame for it. Mm -hmm. And then if we turn it over on its back got more of a design. Another reason why I don't know if I would hang it, because then you wouldn't be able to see both sides. Or maybe you'll be one of those persons that goes on eBay soon after this and get you a second one just for one of these, just so you can have both of them display on the wall at the same time. Who knows? So, there we go. So, just going to go ahead and roll itself up anyway, so let's go ahead and roll that back up. So, that is Breath of the Wild Collector's Edition. That is what you get out of the box automatically. And honestly, I think it would probably be worth it just for the carrying case. Like I said, I, I'm, I'm stoked by the carrying case. I'm glad to see that not only are the game devs, you know, they're, they're on train with the idea of making accessories for the console they made the game for, but, you know, obviously it's a Nintendo game. But I'm, I'm glad to see that they're willing to go to that detail because I feel like... There's probably going to be a lot of broken switches come soon. But there we go. Let's see if we can get everything in shot real quick. Just 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 cuz. So we'll go ahead and get the Joy-Con controller. The Pro Controller. Let's see. The switch itself. This is gonna be difficult to get all this in shot, but just maybe we can do it. And we'll just set these up here because they aren't that crucial, but just to give you an idea. So, ladies and gents, that's that's what you get with the Nintendo Switch, the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller, and Breath of the Wild Collector's Edition. And I think that's a fairly good purchase in either way. So, with that being said, we're going to go ahead and go ahead and finish this up. So, as always, Thanks for watching. If you like this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you disliked it, you know where the dislike button is. As always, stay awesome. <laughs>